In this video, we're going to graph rational functions, and I'm writing same degree, and what I mean by that is I mean that the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, okay? And so, like, for example, this is a first degree in the numerator, because that x has an invisible 1, and this one has a 1 as well. So for now, the, the example in this video is just going to be same degree, okay? And so I kind of do, I break it down to these four steps, and so let's kind of look at these. It says, first off, to find the zeros, a.k.a. the x-intercepts, Let's set the numerator equal to zero and solve. Because if this numerator is zero, it doesn't matter what the denominator is, because zero over anything would be zero. That would give us our y by zero. It could be zero over a billion, and it's still zero, right? So I'm just going to set my numerator equal to zero and solve. So I'm going to add five to each side, and I'm going to divide by two. And it looks like we have an x-intercept at the ordered pair 2.5, zero. Then to find the y-intercept, we substitute 0 in for x. I want to remember, I want to tie this back to Algebra 1. For the zeros, we're trying to find out what's the x value when y is 0, which was 2.5. For the y-intercept, we're trying to figure out what is the y value when x is 0. So I substitute a 0 in for x. And I could, I could use my function notation, say f of 0 if I wanted to. But it looks like we're going to get negative 5 in the numerator and positive 3 in the denominator. So I have the ordered pair, negative 5, 3, which isn't quite 2. It's going to be right there, negative 1 and 2 thirds. Okay? I should maybe have done that color-coded, okay? but oh well. Next, vertical asymptotes. To do that, we're going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to figure out... Um, what makes the denominator zero? Because there's going to be a vertical asymptote there. A function is undefined at that value. So if I set 3x plus 3 equal to zero and solve, we have 3x equals negative 3 once I subtract 3 from each side. And then once I divide by 3 on each side, we get that x equals negative 1. That means at negative 1, we have a vertical asymptote. Okay? Now, the horizontal asymptotes, I think this is kind of the hairiest part of graphing rational functions. Um, I always break it down to three categories. My, my, one of my other teachers told me this little rhyme, and I like it. You have Bobo, Bosco, and Botno, okay? And that's how you tell what the asymptotes are, meaning you look at the degree, okay? If the degree is bigger on bottom, then the asymptotes at y equals zero. Well, we don't, that's not our situation here. We don't have a bigger on bottom. That would be if we had like a fourth degree down here, but a third degree up here. That would be bigger on bottom. In this case, we have the second category, Bosco, which is the degrees both are the same. We have a first degree and a first degree. They're the same, so the asymptote is the ratio of the coefficients, meaning this has a coefficient of 2, this has a coefficient of 3. So that would mean our asymptote is going to be y equals the ratio of those, 2 thirds. So, um... If I come up here and I have 1, then that means our asymptote is at 2 thirds. So y equals 2 thirds is that asymptote. Our, um, I didn't label our vertical asymptote, but it's at negative 1. And so here's what we have. For a situation that's pretty simple like this, we know that our function isn't going to cross that vertical asymptote, but it's going to go through our y-intercept. It's going to go through our x-intercept. And now we have this situation. We're not really sure if it's up here, and we're not really sure if it's down here, okay? I'm not sure if our, our graph's either going to look like that or it's going to be the one up here. It's going to be one of those two, but our way that we can figure it out or that I like to figure it out, just to play it safe, is why don't I just take some random number over here, like a negative 5, and substitute it into our, into our function. So if I were to do that, if I were to say, okay, what's, what's f of negative 5? I would get... 2 times negative 5 minus 5, and 3 times negative 5 plus 3. If I simplify that, that would be negative 15 over negative 12, or a positive 15 twelfths, I guess. Um, what that means is 15 twelfths is greater than my asymptote of 2 thirds. That means when I put in negative 5, let's say that's negative 5, I get 15 twelfths. That tells me that the graph is going to be up here. So that's just a rough sketch. Once again, it's not super pretty, but that's a rough sketch of what your um, 
rational function would look like if these are both same degree. Here's a second example. I'd encourage you to go ahead and try to do this one on your own um, and then hit play and, and, and watch me work through it. But I'm going to just jump into it. So same structure as last time. We're going to start with the zeros um, or the x-intercepts. So I'm going to set the numerator equal to zero and solve. I'll try to do a little bit better job about being color-coded this time. So I add five to each side and then I divide by three on each side and we find that our root is going to be five-thirds comma zero. So if I have one, two, our x-intercept is going to be right there. Then for our y-intercept, we're going to substitute zero into our function. So I would say, okay, what's f of zero? That's three times zero minus five over two times zero plus six. That's going to be negative five, six, or when x is zero, y is negative five over six. So negative 5, 6 is almost 1, so we're going to be right there. There's our y-intercept. Then for our vertical asymptote, we're going to set our denominator equal to 0 and solve. Because our asymptote is where our function is undefined. And it's undefined any time the denominator is 0. So if I solve that little equation, we get that x equals negative 3. 1, 2, 3. And that's our vertical asymptote of x equals negative 3. Now lastly, let's do, um, let me get another color, how about purple. Let's do our horizontal asymptotes. We have, this is going to be a Bosco. And the reason it's Bosco is we're not looking at the coefficients. The coefficients are different. We're looking at the exponents. That's a first degree and that's a first degree. Therefore, our exponents are both are the same. Therefore, the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the coefficients. Those coefficients up here are 3 and 2. That would mean that our horizontal asymptotes is y equals 3 halves. So 3 halves is basically 1.5. Sorry, that shouldn't be a solid line. That's an asymptote. It should be dotted. So we have y equals 3 halves. Now, to actually connect the dots on this function, um, what we are going to do it's going to go through our y-intercept, it's going to go through our x-intercept, and then um, you could check it by substituting a point over here, but this one's going to do the same thing as last one. Very similar example to the last problem. But if you follow these steps, you should be good to go.